Hey everyone, last week I gave you my top reasons why you will love Ashes of Creation. Now, I want to give you my top 5 reasons why you might hate Ashes of Creation. But just to say before we get into the video, that some of these reasons I actually don't mind. Other reasons, I very much do. This is a little bit of what I've seen from the community as far as their feedback of what they deem negative about Ashes of Creation. Alright, so let's get into the video. Reason number 5, PvP only servers. I can't tell you how many times I have heard from my friends that are on the fence, people on Reddit, the forums, that if Ashes of Creation does not have PvE servers, they will not play the game. PvP for a lot of people is just completely off the table for them to play an MMO if they can't toggle off the PvP. Just to reiterate, Ashes of Creation will be a PvX MMO. Well, what is PvX? Let the main man Steven Sharif tell you why Ashes of Creation is PvX. Uh, just a little bit of history for you guys. Ashes of Creation is going to be a PvP-based um, housing system, uh, raiding system, castles. Uh, give us the, give us the, uh, all the exciting stuff. So we like to really refer to ourselves as a PvX game because, in, in our opinion, those systems of PvP, PvE, crafting, they're all intertwined. They're interdependent on each other. You need populations in both categories. And to be honest, most MMO players don't wholly fit in one or the other. They kind of have an experience outside of that. So you know our 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 system of development really requires some interdependency there between those things. You're going to need a crafter to give you the best items. You're going to need PvPers to secure these cities and castles. You're going to need PvEers to take down those world bosses for those materials to craft. So, um, you know, we have a lot of focuses on PvP mechanics like our castle wars, our, our node system, our caravan trade system where... Uh, uh, you hear that? Say it one more time, dude. So our caravan system is really the way that we transit goods between regions. We're a very EVE-style economy in the sense that we have no global auction house we have no global warehouse instead you collect resources within a region and you must move those resources to another region in order to craft something and that movement is risky and we want it to be risky because risk versus reward is a very important aspect of gameplay yes. at a principal and fundamental level ashes of creation can't work as just a pve mmo most of my best and worst memories in my mmo experience are people interactions regarding pvp PvP is a hard subject for some MMO players, but with the corruption system in place for Ashes, in my opinion, people won't be killing each other for no reason. Will it happen? Absolutely. But will it happen all the time 24-7? No, because once people see how harsh the corruption system brings to their character, people will think twice before killing someone for absolutely no reason. Personally, I played in a PvE server for the majority of my WoW career and was in my safe box all the time. I really look forward to bringing the community back to interact with players, whether it's on a PvP level, or economics, or even roleplay purposes. It's about time we can have an MMO that will punish people for grieving, but also allow PvP to happen organically out in the open world. My recommendation is to wait and see for yourself. There might be servers that are very PvE focused and hardly PvP. Who knows? But I would keep an open mind about this because Ashes of Creation offers so much for the average player for that person to say, I don't want to play because of PvP. You're just missing out on so much more. Reason number four, time sinks. So there will be several things in Ashes of Creation that are going to take a lot longer to do than in other MMOs. Leveling will definitely be one of them. Typically, in a current MMO, the leveling process is very fast and usually done within a day or two for most MMO players. You could even buy level boost to bypass it if you want. Well, in Ashes of Creation, leveling will be a lengthy process like back in the day playing vanilla World of Warcraft. I remember it took me almost two months to level from 1 to 70 back in TBC. I also had no idea what I was doing back then. Nowadays, we've gotten so min-max with really great guides from YouTube, websites, that it's all spelled out for you on how to do something completely efficient without wasting your time. At least right now in the wiki, leveling to max will take you anywhere between 4 to 6 hours a day for 45 days. Again, that can be changed, but for the most part, leveling will be something you won't be able to do in just a couple of days. I am sure for Alpha 2, content creators will have videos on what is the best leveling path for you as a player. Steven has also mentioned that he wants leveling to be meaningful, but be an adventure again. The best example I can give is Elden Ring. You go into the game, and the world is your oyster. You can do whatever you want, go wherever you want, and the game lets you do that. Traveling may also be a problem for players, since the world of Ashes will be very big. Now, this game will have mounts, which is awesome, but for those first to 20 levels, you're probably going to be running around everywhere. Personally, I don't have a problem running around. I'm just glad you'll have mounts to look forward to. 
You will also have flight paths that you can take to other neighboring nodes. Traveling will be something you want to do for economic reasons as well, since there are going to be regional auction houses and not a global one. Not because they want distance to matter, but because they want resources to. Caravans, which I have discussed in a previous video, will have a risk-reward mechanic, and if there is a global auction house, the whole caravan system would be pretty much useless. Reason number three, exclusivity. So if I can put on my old man hat for a second, back in my day, not everyone could be in tier geared all decked out in epics. In Ash as a Creation, there will definitely be a level of exclusivity that people aren't used to in today's MMOs. Just as an example, flying mounts. Chances are in Ash as a Creation, you may never fly in the Skies of Era because flying mounts were very rare and exclusive. According to the Ashes of Creation wiki, Steven said back in 2020 that you may only be able to see up to 20 people actually flying on your server. Mind you, server capacity will be anywhere between 12 to 15,000. That's pretty damn rare in my opinion. So if you're not a Twitch streamer or a huge YouTube personality or even a guild leader, you're probably not going to fly in Ashes of Creation. Personally, coming from World of Warcraft, I like the game better when you don't fly around everywhere. Especially since exploration is going to be something Intrepid wants to incentivize for Ashes, it doesn't just stop at flying mounts. Legendaries are also going to be super limited and rare for people to have. There will be legendaries that are only 5 or 10 per server, and there will be select legendaries that will only have 1 per server. Now that's not to say that gearing will be very hard to do in Ashes. Professions will play a very big role in gearing out your character, but we will have to see in Alpha 2 how gear distribution will be from the leveling perspective. I am very glad that there will be tier sets at very early levels to obtain and to wear. Gearing as you level is usually very boring, and you just mainly wear the gear the quest givers give you, but since professions are going to be very integral to gearing your character, not just at endgame, but during the leveling process as well. Reason number two, the consequences of dying. So until now, I haven't hated any of my reasonings. However, XP debt, that I have a problem with. And let me tell you why. I know I'll probably get a lot of old school EverQuest, Ultima Online, Final Fantasy XI people down in the comments. By the way, let me know down in the comments what you hate about Ashes. People saying, I need to toughen up. Get better, bro. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read off to you what happens when you die in Ashes of Creation. XP debt, skill and stat dampening, lower health and mana, lower gear proficiency, reduction in drop rates from monsters, durability loss, dropping a percentage of carried gatherables and process goods. Also, when you resurrect, you spawn at the nearest respawn point on the map. So potentially, seven big things happen to you when you die, eight if you include the distance to travel back to where you were. I am fine with a lot of things, except XP debt, and also the decreased drop rates for monsters. Both of those are just too much, even for me. I understand the argument of wanting death to matter, and even with both of those components removed, in my opinion, death will still matter very much, so why make it so punishing for players? I feel that once people die to either just playing the game or being killed by another player and they realize how much it sucks to die, that might be a quit point for a lot of people. Lag, internet outage, or just being AFK to use the bathroom to come back and you're dead? Yeah, that sucks, but why does it have to? Talking about the decreased drop rates in monsters for a second? Hard no. Also. We don't have any indication of how long these debuffs will last once you come back to life. More than likely, that'll all be answered in Alpha 2 for sure. My whole point is, death matters plenty already. Heck, just having a portion of your gatherables taken away from you is bad enough. Now, let's move on to the number one reason why you might hate Ashes of Creation. Reason number one, FOMO Cash Shop. Many Ashes content creators have made videos discussing this very topic, and now I'm gonna throw my hat into the ring and you may not like my response. Personally, I don't care that Intrepid has a FOMO cash shop. The fact that Ashes of Creation won't have any pay-to-win mechanics, a rotating cosmetic shop doesn't bother me in the slightest. Looking at the forums and Discord messages I've encountered, I have seen people ask Intrepid to bring all of the previous cosmetics back so people can purchase them. First off, that would be against the law to advertise that these cosmetics would be limited time and never available again. Then to put all of those cosmetics for people to buy, the best example I can give people is saying, hey, I never knew about cryptocurrency or Bitcoin, so can I get Bitcoin at the price it was back in 2011? That just sounds ridiculous to say out loud. I understand the frustration of wanting to look amazing in-game, and then someone just buys that amazingness at the shop. 
I know coming from World of Warcraft with mounts, people never say, oh man, that's a cool mount, because most players know that that was a cash shop mount. I really wish Intrepid goes the Final Fantasy XIV route and make the cash shop have casual cosmetics like shirt, sandals, shorts, sunglasses, etc. I think the real beef with a lot of people is that you can buy amazing raid sets at the shop, so for us competitive people, it makes us feel like all of our hard work killing bosses doesn't matter. You can just go to the shop and look like a raider. So my advice Intrepid, make the rotational cash shop super casual in nature. Keep all the really cool item sets for in-game players. At the end of the day, people just want to look badass, and rightfully so. I don't think you should just buy your badassery in the cash shop personally. With Ashes of Creation still in production and Alpha 2 on the horizon, we all have worries. I listed some of those worries right here in this video, and hopefully once we get into the Alpha 2, we as a community can leave feedback on all of our worries and make this game the best MMORPG of our generation. Thank you for watching.